Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Buzz. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's video is going to be about how to diagnose and repair what I suspect is a sheared flywheel key on this lawnmower right here. The guy that brought it to me um, said, well, actually, he didn't say this. I suspected that he hit something, and he said he did because when I turned the mower over, the blade was on upside down. And of course, he mows at the lowest possible setting, so the blade has been hitting all kinds of things. So uh, the biggest clue to me, other than it not starting, is that it would tend to uh, jerk the pull cord right out of my hand uh, about every third or fourth time I tried to pull on the cord. Um, some mowers do this very, very violently, uh, and this one wasn't so bad, but it was enough to make me suspect that this is what the problem was. So let's get into this, see if we can't figure this out. All right, these two Phillips screws come out. Uh, they, I believe, are going into plastic, so um, when you put it back on, you don't want to do it too tight. Yeah, there's a plastic ring right there. And these shoulder bolts, um, you can see why they're called a shoulder bolt. If you lose them, they're kind of hard to replace at your hardware store. So don't, don't lose them. And the gas tank, you normally can just fold back. Sometimes it will disconnect from the carburetor, so you got to be careful of that. But this should be all right right here and that again is another shoulder bolt so you don't want to lose that all right that comes off and you want to be really careful not to pull it all the way out from here but this comes out there's a little tab that holds it in place right there and then you can just spin this guy out of the way, make sure he stays in and he's out of the way. And if there's uh, any chance that these, there's a rust or corrosion, you don't want to use an impact tool. You'll want to take those off by hand. And these are some longer bolts. The ones in the back are shorter. All right. As you can see, these bolts are shorter. Sorry about the shaky cam. All right, so we're ready to pull that metal shroud off. All right, so it's a little tight getting it off. Uh, it sometimes gets caught right there. You just have to kind of wiggle it off. All right, and so there is the recoil starter, completely free. If you have not done so already, you will need to find a way to activate the bale or the dead man handle. This does two things. This will activate the kill switch at the same time releasing a small brake pad that's on the flywheel. We need the flywheel to be able to turn freely for the rest of the um, operation here. In order to make my life easier, I'm going to be removing the choke uh, return mechanism here. It's a plastic thing. has a quarter inch uh, bolt that uh, goes to the top of the uh, carburetor right there. So I'm going to get that out of my way. It's a plastic thing. It's just going to be a problem for me. And just be mindful of how that goes back in that slot. Now if you don't have an impact wrench, you're going to have to find a way to keep the flywheel from turning. You can do that a couple of ways. You can stop the blade underneath with a 2x4 or something. Um, I oftentimes use a strap wrench around here, uh, but I'm just going to use an impact wrench to get this guy off of here. Alright, that was pretty easy. And indeed, my suspicion was correct. The reason it was kicking back is because, uh, come on, focus there. 
uh, as you can see, the, the slot on the crankshaft for the Woodruff key is sheared off and the flywheel is rotated all the way over to here. So the reason I'm getting spark is because it is sparking fine, but it's sparking at the wrong time, about 90 degrees off of the timing of where it should be sparking. Actually, it holds this flywheel on is friction because the crankshaft itself is tapered slightly and uh, it's on there really, really tight. And uh, Briggs and Stratton actually very conveniently gives you two holes. Uh, you do have to tap them uh, with quarter inch threads and then use quarter inch bolts on a steering wheel puller or, you know, some puller set. Uh, and we will be able to lift this flywheel off. I'm going to be using a pull. It's a uh, steering wheel puller. Uh, comes from Auto Parts Store. It comes with various sizes. Uh, bolts to thread into um, blocks or whatever you're trying to pull off at that point. Um, and if you don't have this tool or don't want to purchase it, you can rent it for free. And I say that's free in quotation marks from most auto parts stores. Um, what they do is they basically charge you on your card for the cost of the tool. And then when you bring it back, they give you your money back. You can always, uh, you know, buy the tool real cheap from Harbor Freight, places like that, uh, various types of things. But I'm going to be using this one. Get a little WD-40 on the threads of this thing, and um, we will tap out the aluminum. It's pretty easy because they've already got it pre-done for you, so... And when you tap a hole in aluminum, it's a good idea to run your tap in and out a couple of times to make sure those shards of threads don't break your tap. are uh, tapped with a quarter 20 tap. Uh, be threading in some uh, quarter 20 bolts that come with the puller. Um, I'm going to put the nut back on because it should pop off with a pretty hefty amount of force and I don't want it to go flying across the shop. Um, you'll note that there is a, a indentation right in the middle of the crankshaft which should match up with some sort of indentation or tip on whatever your puller machine is. So I'm going to get all that set up and pop this thing off of here. Now you want to thread them in as deep as you can, hopefully at least as deep as you threaded the hole, because that's what's going to keep this thing from flying out of there. If you only grab just a few threads, you might just shear it right out, because this is aluminum. All right, so I have a two by four uh, jammed in where the blade is, so keep it from turning now. And uh, this is a 19 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna be tightening this thing down and it should make a big old pop. There you go. And as you can see, the flywheel is now loose. Uh, you want to make sure the flywheel is rotated so where the magnets are not near where the coils are. Um, and this seems to be in a good spot. And then it'll just wiggle right on off of there. And uh, yeah, so you can see where that Woodruff key just sheared right in two. Um, still kind of smeared inside the groove slot. And uh, there's the other half of it. And the flywheel itself um, looks pretty good. It's salvageable. It's not too damaged. A dental pick type of tool is kind of convenient to you know, dig that out of there, get all that crap out. Doesn't look too bad.
and the key itself is a, is a rectangular shape, but it doesn't have like a up or down. Uh, if this was a Tecumseh engine, uh, it does tend to have, uh, it is an L-shaped key, so it only goes in one way. So you want to put this in so that the flat side is, uh, uh, the widest flat side goes right inside the slot, and it, make sure it is, in there all the way towards the bottom but not protruding out so far that we won't be able to get the flywheel back on. Okay so I've rotated uh, the crankshaft around so the magnets are not going to stick on the magnets of the coil or the magnets won't stick to the coil uh, and then just uh, eyeball it straight down on top Alright, so that'll work its way right down, and when we tighten it down, it'll seat right on that taper of the crankshaft. It's not wobbly, and the key is now flush with the top of the flywheel. Replace the uh, cup, starter cup, and then the nut, and then we'll get out the torque wrench and tighten it down to the specified torque. Uh, while holding the blade or the flywheel. All right. You can uh, find this online. I've printed it up and I just keep a copy of it in the shop. But this is a check chart, common clearances, valve clearances, torques, and specifications for all of Briggs and Stratton's common engines. And this particular uh, l shape engine is, uh, this flywheel is 55 foot-pounds. We're just going to torque this thing down until we hear it click. There we go. All right. Basically, going to put everything back in the opposite order. Uh, the first things first is the uh, choke mechanism. And remember the little tab that goes right inside the carburetor, and that is a quarter inch socket on top of there. And make sure that is. Uh, operating freely. Next is the recoil starter and um, this little bit has to fit behind the bracket here. There's another fiddly little piece on this side. I'll show you over there once we get that in. So that's basically just going to line up just like so. And I'll take you to the other side to make sure we fit the slot in the far side. The other piece right inside of here on the far side, you see there's this little double lip goes inside, outside, and inside. That's really easy to get messed up, so you want to make sure that lines up. And then you can check all the other bolts, holes, and make sure they line up. Then we can put these bolts in. Remember the longer bolts, there's the short ones and the long ones. The longer ones came out of the front side. Oops. And I don't know what the exact torque is for these, but just make sure they're good and tight. Don't overdo it because you are going into the aluminum head. And then the same thing on the back side. Again, get them started by hand. And we're also going into aluminum so you don't again I don't know what the torque is but just don't don't strip them out it would be awkward and there is that tab right there that goes into that slot and lift it up just a little bit and then pop it back in make sure you don't uh, pull it out from the bottom all right and then again, this is the shoulder bolt, and I've swapped out that uh, ten millimeter socket 
on my T-handle for the 8 millimeter, and the rest of these shoulder bolts go on with the 8 millimeter. Again, just don't overdo the torque. That's good. All right, then we're going to tilt the gas tank back in place, making sure that we haven't disconnected any hoses. Again, three shoulder bolts go through the plastic ring of the gas tank. And get them all started before you tighten them down. Because these guys can get out of alignment. And the last thing is to replace the plastic housing. There is a tab that fits in the gas tank. And these are going into plastic, so don't strip those out. All right, so there you have it. That's how to diagnose and repair a broken flywheel key. Some people call them a woodruff key, same thing, on a lawnmower. Hope you learned something. If you did, please push the like and subscribe button, and I can make more of these videos. And if you didn't learn anything and you didn't like it, well, push it anyway. It's your good deed for the day. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Remember, I'm the lawnmower lady, and as I like to say, mo happy.